the, the personal history cuts like a red line through this book. Um, and that had already existed, which is why, as I, you know, in some ways, this book is a prequel uh, to Emperor. The second event is, um, you know, the more I, the more I was thinking about cancer, the more I thought about normalcy and what makes a cell normal. How do we, how do, how does our body, our cells ensure normalcy? And then the third one, as you pointed out, were the remarkable changes in. Um, scientific technologies that allow us to, as I describe it, read and write genomes. My own concerns are that uh, we need to have the vocabulary that, and the scientific and moral tools to be able to make these decisions. Uh, my own stands are, um, you know, obviously I, I think that the dangers are great and the promises are great. I think the capacity to cure diseases through gene therapies, um, you know, we work on this in our own lab. Um, so we're ve I'm very optimistic about the idea that you can, if, if genes and genetic therapies and the power of genes is used in, a, in, in the proper way, we can really um, have a profound effect on human health. But on the other hand, I, I think we don't even have the moral skeleton to be able to ask the question, you know, to what extent should we intervene on the human genome mm -hmm. in a permanently heritable way. Gene therapy is easier to some extent mm -hmm. because, you know, with gene therapy you're not having a permanently heritable effect mm -hmm. on the human genome. Mm -hmm. You're not changing the human genome in perpetuity. Mm -hmm. um, but the genetic surgery or genetic editing, gene editing, gene uh, genetic engineering in that sense has the capacity to change human heredity or an animal's heredity in perpetuity. Mm. And that's a very different scenario. My lab is interested in blood and the development of blood and blood cancer. Um, and um, we, we've studied blood cancer for many, many years and we use a variety of uh, ways to understand blood cancer. We were among the first labs to find genes that are implicated in various blood cancers. We try to find out how these genes work um, and why they cause cancer and whether we can use drugs to solve these uh, particular blood cancers, leukemias and lymphomas. Um, we are now becoming more and more interested in gene therapy mm -hmm. for blood cancers. Um, we've used, begun to use these technologies like gene engineering. Mm -hmm. um, and in fact, one of the things that we have been able to do is use uh, gene engineering technologies to um, eliminate uh, some of the genes or inactivate some of the genes that cause blood cancers. Wolverine has a very interesting premise, as you know, okay. because it reverses the normal uh, science fiction thriller. Mm. Uh, in, in, the, in, in the typical 1950s, humans are running away from the mutants. Mm. In the, in, at least in the X-Men, for the first time, you get this, this idea that the mutants uh, or the variants are being pursued by the humans mm. and they have to hide from the humans. Mm. That idea is actually a very profound, philosophically very ethically very profound idea, mm. is who's normal mm. and how do we, what does discrimination or persecution mean?